today we're going to be taking this motor out and tearing it down completely and having a look in the bottom end to see if we need to replace any parts. This is a Ski-Doo Formula Mach 1 and this is the 617 motor and if you haven't seen part 1, I'll link it here, but we determined that this cylinder had a bunch of water in it that was really rusty looking so I want to look at the bottom end because we're going to end up selling this sled and I don't want to sell it to someone not knowing if the bottom end is good. And if you can tell here, we took this oil seal out and you can see the bearing. The balls are just kind of free floating there. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but uh, just kind of concerning. So we're going to go ahead and take it all out and bring it to the bench, see what we can find out. Get the carbs out of here. And when we took the clutch off, we already took all the motor mount bolts off. Because, great design, you can't take the clutch out without moving the motor over. Kind of silly, but... So, we're going to take the carburetors off and then start taking some of the electrical plugs off. And also on this motor, these carburetors, I marked this one with an L for left. Um, one of these cylinders runs hotter from the factory, so they put different jets. One has a little bigger, a little smaller jet to compensate for that. So... Make sure, even if it doesn't have that, make sure you always mark right and left carburetor just to be safe. up on aisle four. Alright, so we moved the sled over and cleaned up our accident. I'm going to go ahead and pull this starter off so that we can lay this motor flat on its belly. start tearing this thing apart. I think we'll start with the pull cord and the stator. Looks like 10 mil maybe. Oh yeah. Let's get this pull cord out of here. This nut is a 1 and 3 16th. So get this off of here. Alright, now for this. We'll have to get a puller on here and pop this magneto out. I'm just going to use a harmonic balancer puller kit. You can rent these from your auto parts store. They usually have them in stock. hammer give it a couple wax all right sometimes you just need a bigger hammer so this does I'm gonna apply a little heat because we start screwing this in anymore it's gonna start breaking stuff so let me uh, put a little bit of heat, see if that helps. Will you look at that?
at that. That was a lot of pressure. Holy cow. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, look at this. Any more would have just snapped those off. Well, at least we got it. Let's get the stator out of here next. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave the stator here. It'll be out of our way enough so we can still split the case. Alright, I'll show you guys what I'm thinking. I think we'll take these boots off so I can get to this and disconnect this wire. And I'm wondering if we take these four bolts out, that all this will just kind of come out in assembly. So we'll give that a shot, see if that works. Okay, so that spins with the crankshaft, turning this gear, and that's what pumps the oil through the system. Nice. Thirteen mil once again. So well, that's pretty good. Let's uh, spin it over a little bit. Yeah, no scoring on the cylinder walls. Take a look at that one. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Yeah, this is nice thick rubber. This is uh, probably reusable. All right, now. What is that, some more 13 mil? Yeah, we'll take those out. I'm leaving this Y exhaust on, so it kind of holds both cylinders. It'll be easier to pull both of them up at the same time, I think. All right, and these are actually not 13s, actually 11 mil. does the trick. Mm, side to side play isn't terrible. Yeah, not terrible. I've seen worse. Alright, let's keep digging. this is the right side. You always want to label what side piston is, especially if you're putting them back in. So this ring is perfectly mated to the right side cylinder, so we're going to keep track of that.
Yeah, you can tell the water had a little bit of an effect on the bottom end, but honestly, I don't think it was too bad. And this is the bearing that was in question because the balls are just kind of rolling any way they choose. So, yeah, and that O-ring, that O-ring is stretched out, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to do some digging online to see if there's any used in good condition whole assembly cranks. There might be a good deal on eBay. Or clean it up, get all this rust out, and then maybe just replace this one. I don't know. Let's pull this out completely and start turning these bearings, see if they're grindy at all. This one has a little bit more of a hang up and it feels a little a little gritty. This one rolls pretty smooth. This one's starting to make a little noise. These aren't bad. And then this oil seal is probably bad. Oh yeah. You can see on this back side how there's oil coming out. Here. Yeah. Oil coming out, back side. Yeah, no good. So, yeah, I'm just going to do a little digging in line and see what we can come up with, and I'll get back to you. All right, we got all of our parts in. We were able to find a used crank on eBay that is in really good condition, and this thing was only, I think, 120 bucks, but it sounds way better. All the bearings are super quiet super smooth the rod play it's right where it needs to be so much better unit there and for 120 bucks can't really go wrong and i couldn't even find new bearings by themselves anyways this being kind of a rare machine um, and the gasket kit was i think 60 bucks and it didn't really need pistons but i figured while i'm in there I might as well because these are only 15 bucks a piece and I went ahead and got a honing tool for this size bore. I didn't have one, so might as well add it to the tool collection. But we're set up here. It's going to be our cleaning table. I already prepped some of the mating surfaces, and I went in all these holes with a, a tap just to clean the threads. And, yeah, we're just going to clean everything up and start assembling. All right, now we're just going to hone the cylinders here. No. Put some two-stroke oil here on the stones. Should be fine for what we're doing. Put a little on the cylinder as well. All right, that looks good to me. Let's uh, get all those fine metal shavings cleaned out and then we can start putting this thing together. All right, our parts are all clean and laid out, ready to go. We're gonna assemble it here. Got all the new parts and bolts laid out. I think what we're gonna start with is we're gonna take these pistons and throw them in the cylinder here and uh, check ring gap, make sure that's good and then we'll start assembling the rest. Okay, so I got the manual opened up here, and we've got our motor here, the 643. I call it the 617 because it's 617 cc's, but apparently it's the 643, and we're going to be looking for a ring gap of 15 thousandths to 29 thousandths of an inch, and then our wear limit is 47 thousandths. So our old rings, I think, was about 4 thousandths, so there was still a little bit life left, but... For 30 bucks, we're just gonna throw some new rings in it. So let's get them set in here and see where we're at. Yeah, I'm just gonna put a very light coating of oil so you don't scratch the cylinder. I'm gonna pop that ring in there. That 
19 thousandths is a little too loose. Twenty thousandths, there's a slight drag. So let's check, see. Yeah, between fifteen thousandths and twenty-nine thousandths. So we're right at twenty thousandths. So that's perfect, right in the middle of that range. Let's check the other one. All right, this one's a little better at seventeen thousandths. So both right within the range: seventeen thousand, twenty thousand. Let's keep going. put some gasket maker moto seal works good just a thin layer on here and then we'll mate it all together all right I think we're ready to put it together here this torque down looks like it's 16 foot pounds already got this set grab my socket All right, and they make a tool that holds the cylinders like this, but I figured if I keep the exhaust on, I wouldn't have to buy a tool. They call it the uh, cylinder alignment plate. So if you just leave the exhaust on, don't have to buy that. One side. Holes are lined up good. Everything spins like it should. All right. It looks like these are 16 foot pounds as well. And we're going to put some medium strength Loctite. Collar good. Okay, so now for the timing of the rotary valve, we have to install this plate, and I'll just kind of put it here, and you guys can read it if you want to. But basically, we have to get the magneto side at top dead center, and then align this with the tab on the case right here. So, pretty simple. Let's go do it. All right, so magneto side will need to be top dead center. Right, 
there. Line this up like so. That's right. I was looking at it and uh, this is definitely a top dead center and I was able to get this lined up. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and install the head now. If you look these bigger holes, smaller holes, bigger openings, smaller openings. You can definitely install this the wrong way. So looks good there. Yeah, slap it on like this. So all of these are 16 foot-pounds as well, and they do not require any Loctite. All right, let's double check. This needs some Loctite, medium strength, and it's 77 foot-pounds. All right, 77 foot-pounds. We are assembled, complete, ready to go back in the sled. And fast forward a little bit, we got everything in, topped off the coolant, we checked the chain case fluid, that all looks good. Got the battery charging, we got the belt on, clutches lined. Everything should be ready to go. I got the carbs off, we already cleaned them. I'm going to show you guys how to sync them together on the bench and then we'll throw it all together and see what happens. Alright, so to sync these together we're just going to be adjusting two things, the idle screw and the air mixture screw. Which, the air mixture screw you just want to follow spec for whatever machine you have. For us it's two turns out, so we've got both of them set to two turns out. And I'll show you guys how to get these dialed in perfectly. You'll need the slide off the carburetors put it in there and then you want to hold it down with your fingers just push it down and then basically screw this all the way out to make sure the slides all the way in the down position and then screw it in until it stops it stops right there so as you can tell that little mark right there I used a file and I marked where that is right before it starts lifting this slide. So we know we'll go one, two. 
and we made the same mark for this one so we'll put this one two turns and then once it's on the machine if we have to adjust it we'll have a mark to reference so we can dial them both back or forward the same amount all right so we got the carbs in there they're all hooked up i went ahead and put some premix in the gas tank since we didn't prime the oil system it might take a little bit uh, for the engine to get oil so figured a little premix in there won't hurt anything got the track off the ground fresh battery i think we're ready to try and fire this thing up probably take a little bit to fill the float bowls but let's see what happens here Bowls are probably getting close. I'm going to give it a couple of primes. See what happens. Tell the idle is so much lower yeah we're gonna probably have to bring that up so the issue before was too high of an idle it was sucking in air on both uh, crankshaft oil seals so now fix our problem okay so I adjusted the idle one full turn on each one let's see if that helps it out at all According to the manual, we should be shooting for about 2,000 RPM. So, yeah, we're just under that, but we're not fully warmed up yet. So, um, I'm going to get it all the way warmed up, and then we'll check it again. fully warmed up and it's sitting right about 2,000 rpm so we're gonna get the rollers down put the track on the ground and pull this thing outside because I'm gonna put it in storage as you can tell it's summer and uh, we're gonna park this one until uh, the start of next winter we'll finish it up but for now let's uh, get it outside and see how it does
this will be the resting place until next winter. Probably get a cover for it, but pretty happy. I think it uh, turned out pretty good. Fire's right up. Idles now. I mean, it sounds great. So the only things left to do is to get the seat cover uh, reupholstered and then some little stuff here and there. But yeah, we'll, we'll ride this thing next year. It's, uh, it's summer now, so we've got a lot of summer toys to get going, but appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.